Why, hello. I'm Charlie, also known as El Nomad, and uh, welcome to my little hovel here. It's kind of a fucking mess, I know, but, eh, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, so, uh, I guess Sheriff wants me to talk about some of, um... Uh, Your latest my, project. The latest project. Well, I just have a few projects on this one. This one's been together for a little while, but, uh, I'm just fixing the brake stay and stuff on it right now. It's, it's got a lot of cool parts from a lot of my friends, uh... This really bitchin' stainless header was built by Eric Barnett. It was on oh, his yeah? bike for a while. All I did was polish it up. And uh, this bike was mostly complete when I got it. My buddy Matt Tobias had it, and uh, I kind of took my liberties with a few things, changing around this and that to suit my liking. Uh, I ended up swapping my last Sportster for this one, uh, my one with the Buell White Lightning motor in it. It was a fun bike, but that Paco frame sucked. This one's kind of just a modified version of the stock frame. Still has the stock mm -hmm. numbers, so oh yeah, it's uh, a lot easier to register. Has good ground clearance. It's, it's pretty much everything I'd want out of a Sportster. You know, it has the super cool dual disc front end. Uh, came with the Sportster Sport. It's a Sportster Sport motor with the dual plug heads, and uh, it'll get up and go, but it still runs pretty smooth. So what uh, year is it officially? It's a uh, 2000, I believe. Okay. 2000, 2001, perhaps. Turn of a century piece. <laughs> yeah, definitely a turn of the century piece. My buddy Matt Hurtado did the seat. It's all hand stitched leather. It came out really sweet. He's out of Austin. He's a real good leather mm -hmm. worker. But uh, this one's gradually come together. I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, I'll be a lot more pleased with it when I can stop with it again. But. And you said you're sticking with Harley calipers, good when you're on the road? Yeah, I like running a lot of takeoff stuff just so I can get replacement parts for it wherever I happen to be and it's it's fairly standard. Yeah. I mean, I try to use as much standard parts on the bikes that I end up taking over the road as possible. But this is not for the Stampede. This is not for the Stampede. This one's going to be the one that will haul the mail this year. Okay, in let's take a look episode, on that. What's that? What's basically we have here? This one, uh, she ain't much to look at right now, but it's a Z1900. It's, uh, the motor's been punched out to 1050. It's uh -huh. got degreeable cams, the crank's welded. Uh, it's got a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, Could you take the basic rules to enter the Stampede? There's only four rules to enter the Stampede. Rigid only, uh, struts are okay, but it's kind of a cop out. You know, it's supposed to be a chopper race. Uh, the second rule is no rubber mounted motors, uh, including including the rubber bushings that you'll find sometimes in uh, KZ1000s and other late model Jap bikes. Okay. Uh, third rule of Stampede is uh, no windshields, no hard bags, no fairings. It's, again, it's a chopper race. And the last rule is no chase vehicles of any kind, two-wheeled or four-wheeled. So right now I kind of haven't put all my gear on this one yet, but it's I'm going to be packing probably about nine gallons this year. Wow. Uh, it gets quite a few miles to the gallon. I don't want to let all my tricks out of my sleeve. No. But, uh, but what, what's like the average speed when you do a race like that? I'll go as fast as I can go. Okay, yeah. Which varies <laughs> from location to location. I mean, some places you can get away with going 100, 110, 120. Some places you can only get away with 250, 60, 70. So I uh, just kind of try to stay under the radar and... Uh, yeah. Keep it upright and uh, try to hurt some feelings with it. And we at last we have to take a short look at your really old friend. My really the, old friend. The infamous bike from the Daytona Shores. Yeah, she's uh, she's done her thing. Uh, after the fourth stampede, I stopped running it. I blew up the motor and uh, I had to get into it a couple of times. But since then, it's it's come quite a long way, as you can see. Uh, I, I don't know how many years it's been since then, but uh, I've got this really cool header that me and my buddy built for it, and uh, the motor's a lot fresher now. It's got over 100,000 miles on it. I've got noticed my grandpa seat on it, but uh, I got no well, complaints. Grandpa seat. Yeah, this is this is the old guy seat. This is what it looks like getting old. Okay. And then uh, I also ditched the three-inch belt drive for this uh, inch and a half Rivera Primo unit. It's one of those 11 millimeter poly chains and. I've been quite impressed with it once again. Thanks, Ben, if you ever watch this. Uh, <laughs> but aside from that, not much has changed on it. I haven't managed to wreck it. And, you know, I maybe have a couple new wells on the fender or something. But uh, 
yeah, it's just, this has kind of been my go-to and it's still my go-to, even when all the other ones won't hold up, this one will still haul the mail. All right, Charlie, stay safe. All right. See you well, another year. Thanks for